some of the principles of making a film like that is you want to connect with your audience. So you are putting something on screen that your audience is going to connect with, which is exactly the same as what you want to do in your marketing. You want your client and customer to connect with your brand message, with what you believe in, what you are trying to put out there in the world. So now then just putting that into video, those two principles align with each other so well. So as long as you're going, okay, what do I want the audience to feel? You start making video off the back of that. It doesn't matter the level of production, those principles are the same. And that's when you can start getting your results and seeing uh, the main benefit for video marketing. You're listening to the Client Catching Podcast, the show that uncovers how high-performing service-based business leaders are successfully navigating the ocean of complexity around growing their business. Now, as anyone with a talent and guts to start a business knows, it takes a lot more to grow one than just being great at what you do, and you can't do it alone. So this podcast will show you how other captains of their own ship, just like you, have found the right strategy to catch more clients, simplified everything, and transform their business. So if you're ready to do the same, then jump aboard and join me, Adam King, host and the captain at Think Like a Fish, and let's go fishing. Hey, it's Adam here, and thanks so much for tuning into the show today. Now, before we dive into the episode, I just wanted to let you know how you can get hold of a free copy of my book, Conversational Relationship Marketing, because inside you're going to find 10 golden rules for B2B and professional service firms that consistently create client sales opportunities and drives revenue growth. And you'll find out how to do all of that using professionalism, ethics, and good manners. So what you can do to get your free copy is go to the podcast gift page at thinklikeafish.co.uk forward slash podcast gift. And when you get hold of the book, what you're going to discover is a simple strategy to ensure that you consistently have a full calendar of motivated and qualified ideal potential clients who want to discuss doing business with you. And what I'm literally doing is giving away the exact entire strategy that my clients pay thousands to implement with them. Not only that, I share throughout the book links to templates, frameworks and workbooks that you can use to actually implement this strategy and get results. And it's all for free, no strings attached. In fact, there isn't even an opt in. So please make sure you go and grab your copy on the podcast gift page at thinklikeafish.co.uk forward slash podcast gift. And if you want to grab some of the other gifts and resources that I offer there, please help yourself. So I hope you go and get the book. I hope you read it. And more importantly, I hope you do something with it. And when you do, I'd love to get your feedback on the results that you've got. But until then, let's get to today's episode. Well, hello and welcome to the Client Catching Podcast. Now, I don't know about you, but I think we're living in an age of unbelievable video content. You know, th things from Netflix to YouTube, there's so much amazing content out there that's keeping us entertained, informed and educated. But quality video, it doesn't have to be reserved for film studios because your business can get in on the action too. Now, for quite a while, I don't think there's been any secret about how effective video is to grab the attention of your ideal clients, educate them, build trust and move them along the client journey. But it's not as simple as just uploaded a branded video, for example, and suddenly your marketing campaigns will fly because time, thought and skill is actually really, really needed um, you know, to put into both the strategy behind the content to ensure the benefits that the video offers are, are fully achieved. But don't panic if you have no idea how to make video work for your business. There are a few quick and clever actions that you can take when planning and producing your video content that will make it go much, much further and get the results you're after. And that is exactly what my guest today is going to talk to you about. And he's the managing director of Glace Media, a creative video production agency based in Manchester that specializes in short and long form video content suitable for the digital age. So as B2B video marketing can be so beneficial to pour fuel onto your marketing campaigns. You're going to get a ton of value from this. And it's why I'm absolutely delighted to welcome my guest today onto the Client Catching Podcast, Marcus Johnson. Marcus, welcome to the show. Thank you very much. Thanks for having me. I'm excited to have a chat about all things video marketing. Absolutely. Well, it's a lot better than, uh, than chatting about... Um, uh, video monitors or video baby monitors, which is what we've been doing for the last sort of few minutes, because 
you know, the situation being is, um, yes, I had a bit of an intrusion because, uh, yeah, I had to uh, have the baby monitor, which went off and uh, it delayed us starting. So, first of all, I've thank you very much. I've got insight into the world of uh, baby monitors now, so I think I'll be uh, well qualified when I do need to get one in the future. <laughs> well, the quality of the video on uh, on those things are pretty impressive considering, uh, yeah, their size, but um, maybe not quite relevant for uh, what we're going to be talking about. But um, anyway, so yes, as you say, a bit of an insight into... Um, yeah, just the reality of what's going on in, 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 in the world at the moment and uh, yeah, how, uh, how personal and business tends to blur. And, and actually, I think that kind of leads into a nice sort of question around video and, and content in general. And one of the things I hear from people when, when they sort of ask around content or, you know, okay, well, should I be doing video? And they think it really needs to be this high production, massive sort of polished video. And is that something that you find is required or is it something else? We always encourage people, no matter what it is, just to get started with video. And we're not afraid of kind of saying, all right, get your smartphone out and start filming. And I think a lot of people will think you go to a video agency, they're going to try and sell you this huge production. It's going to cost thousands of pounds. You're not going to be in this studio and it's only something that's going to be fit for a TV advert. But I've realized, especially from seeing what's going on on social media now is that video performs really well, but it doesn't have to be something that's ridiculously high end. And we know that smaller businesses, medium sized businesses don't necessarily have a huge budget to go keep putting out really high production value videos. So it's more a matter of using the philosophies and the ideas behind quality video. And that would be used for a higher production, but putting them into smaller stuff. So if someone says to me, what would work for us? Yeah, of course, we'll always put together a plan of different types of videos that we can do. Done. But the first step to get into video, I'd say, is just get your smartphone, start speaking to your smartphone, delivering stuff about your business, filming your business around the office or whatever it is you're doing. Because the main thing about video is that people want to see what you're doing. They want that human connection. And the beauty of it now is you've got a great camera in your smartphone. People have loads to share and you can get it out straight away to your customers. And once you've built that connection, you can really grow what you are offering them through video. So to get back to what you asked to start with no not at all you don't need a ridiculously high production there's so much that you can do and once you get rolling with a um, video content then you can build it from there and you'll start seeing the benefits as you kind of go through that uh, journey yeah and 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 i as i say i think it's one of the, the fears that people have and, and and maybe it's getting a little bit less but as, as more and more people are seeing the benefits of using that smartphone in their pocket and all that kind of thing and the quality is insane on some of those things i mean yeah. the entire movies are being shot on these things and, and there's even awards now for movies shot on yeah. a smartphone um i can't remember what won it this year but I, it's just phenomenal the quality that you can you can actually get and i think that leads on to a, a, a another question i hear quite a lot is like okay that's fine i get it but what do i do what do i say what content should i create what do you say to that i'd always say is yeah, it is daunting going in front of a camera straight away. Some people love it, but the majority of people are like, they're going to freeze up. They don't know what to say. And they just think it's not for me. But I think the fear of going in front of the camera and looking awkward and feel awkward is a lot bigger than the actual reality because that connection from a video actually does come from looking at someone, seeing the human element of them and seeing them maybe not delivering this amazing speech, but connecting, talking passionately about something. And if you know what you're talking about, if you're passionate about your business, just speaking to the camera, that will come through. And it doesn't matter if it's an Oscar award winning speech. Great if you deliver it and people all flock around and you're some YouTube sensation. Great. But what we found is most businesses most clients and customers, they just want to see a face to a business. This is the same kind of concept that if you're building a website and you have photos of your team on there, you put them on there because you want to put a face to that business and people connect to it more. So I'd say just to get started, find the main topics that you want to talk about for your business. If you're um, giving consultancy advice or if you're selling a product, talk about the things you're interested in and just put that out there. And I think you'll be surprised with the response you'll get from your customers and how easy those videos start to flow once you get going into it. Mm. Um, so yeah, that would be my first tip, which is to get yourself in front of camera and start getting videos out there. And, and sort of following on from that, would you, what, what's your thought on scripting versus 
kind of like not quite going off the cuff because you, you need to have an idea of what you want to say. But, you know, pure scripting and using things like um, like teleprompters or, or or things like that, as opposed to being a bit more natural. Or, and, and is there a place for having both? There's definitely a place for both. I'm much more bigger fan of just going ad libbing, making notes and going off it. That's a bit of a personal style for me is I just feel like when you're doing it that way, you're more inclined to kind of take your passion and knowledge and let that come across and it doesn't feel as forced and you'll kind of just talk about what you would talk about if you were delivering in a meeting or just in an informal chat. But I do understand that once you put a, a camera in front of some people, it's not as easy to get that out. So I think scripting works best if you are going to produce a video that combines other elements to it, because I think direct to camera is a fantastic way of doing things. But the problem is if you're just reading from a script direct to camera, it can come across as a little bit forced and wooden. But if you were to do that, and for example, you've got some other shots that are going within that video, whether it be another angle of yourself doing something, or whether it be stuff from around the business, whether it be office shots or you out doing whatever your business uh, task is or what works great is um just basic animation so i mean animations are really useful too for stuff like this anyway but even mm. if you are just doing something on your smartphone there's great features and apps you can get now of just doing really basic things to break up the um the conversation like that so you're kind of using it as a voiceover rather than um as just one piece so mm. i say i think if you are going to speak to the camera it always does come across better if you're directly speaking to the camera if you just make a few notes and start rolling from there but if you feel that you have something very specific you want to say definitely go for it but break up that video with some other stuff mm. whether it be animation or other shots just because it gives a nicer feel to it but you still get that kind of direct message coming through yeah and 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 i can I can attest to sort of all of that, what you've said there. I mean, my uh, my first forays into video, um, how I've, I've documented it on this podcast. I, I, I was a complete video phobe, um, just putting myself out there, you know, um, I, for a long, long time, I didn't have a picture of myself on my website. It was it was so awkward and so weird. And I look back on some of the first videos I ever did where I literally stood up in front of one and started talking. It's awful. It is so bad. And I look at it and I cringe and I'm, and, and I'm, and I'm not perfect now. I don't, I don't do it brilliantly. I'm no, you know, professional actor or anything like that, where I can just stand up and be natural. I still feel awkward when I do it. The weird thing is you and I are talking direct into a camera right now, but we're doing it over something else. Yeah. Zoom, right? And it's being recorded and it will be uploaded on the podcast. I don't find this awkward whatsoever. <laughs> I, I, you no. know, it's it's my favourite part of the week. I love doing it, and people are getting so used to it now. There is something going on there, like there is a disconnect in my brain that makes it difficult. And do you find that that's something that a lot of people are dealing with? And do you have any tips for how you might kind of uh, yeah get over that? Definitely, and you, like, it is crazy how just that one little thing kind of changes everything. Like you're just then looking at a camera. And you don't have those kind of like human cues of someone else just nodding, looking at you, giving you a response because you're used to that every day. You'll have thousands of conversations in your life and you don't dry up every time you need to go and speak to someone. So what I'd say works really nicely on that is I say there's two ways of doing that. We're looking at it on a simple level. The first would be kind of like what we're doing now, but sit down and have a conversation with say another team member, get someone to interview you or interview them. So if you're working out of the office, I know a few people are getting back to that now, but even if you're not, you can arrange a meeting with someone, mm. is sit down and have that conversation. Let's say here's 15 minutes, 20 minutes, however long you want to do it. And we're going to talk about one of our main products or one of our main offerings to clients and just have that conversation because you thought, before you know it, you're flowing, you're into that. And you don't have to look down the camera to that because it's still an effective video having this kind of interview style because mm. people love watching interviews anyway. You see how many interview shows are on TV. So if you can translate that into your business offering, it's mm. got a form that people are familiar with, but you will flow naturally. And then another form, which I'd say looks more effective if you've got a decent production value to it, but it doesn't mean it can't be done well, is having a conversation with somebody off camera. So this is a way a lot of documentaries will work is you'll notice somebody's 
being interviewed in a kind of talking head style, as we'd call it, but they're speaking to someone off camera. So they're still having a conversation. They're given the answers. You just can't hear the conversation with the person off camera, which mm. is a good way of being able to get that kind of uh, natural tone to it. Um, and if it's done in the right way, it looks uh, pretty good. I'd mm. say if you are just shooting it yourself and you're trying to dive in early, definitely the interview way is a lot better because you're getting another team member in there as well. And I think that's always good to have more faces and show off more people involved with your business. And even if you can't do that physically now, videos like this, a lot of times I've seen that translated and using a platform like this to have that conversation still works really well. Mm. Um, so yeah, I say getting people involved to get that kind of natural conversational element is a great way of still getting out what you want to without the fear mm. of staring down the barrel of a camera. Yeah, and, and, and I think there's something in there as well. I mean, in terms of, um, you know, and, and I'll come on to the question of, of sort of what kind of content should we be creating as, as B2B businesses. But I, I kind of want to explore this as an idea or even. It's, it's kind of like just thinking off the, off the top of, of how to help people with creating content. And it could well be that if it's more of the, the kind of content that you want to nurture and for follow up with people, a lot of people have that as a question. How do I create consistent content? Well, I do it by having a podcast that goes out weekly and you know I've got it all over the place and video and all the rest of it I haven't really ever put the two two together and thinking well maybe you could do this with a team member or with someone else and sit down and do in an hour ask four to five six regularly frequently asked questions of yeah. the expert in your business and have them basically interview but I guess you know from, from this is why I'm kind of asking it allowed and, and exploring the idea in my head as we go which isn't always a good thing with the uh, with the tangents that happen but um <laughs> oh, <familiar with> that. <laughs> yeah, you know it's it's kind of like well is there a way that you could think right okay to, to get the most so that the eventual production or the the, the the edit wouldn't necessarily be an interview or come across as an interview it'd be like right i'm going to ask you a question and then you're going to sort of give me your answer. Is there anything there, do you think, that could work and, and help people to create that content and help them with that edit process after if they're going to do it themselves or, or take it anyway? You got any tips around that? Yeah, I'd say, so this does involve a little more editing. And like I said, it's something that on a simple way can still be done um, with the software that's out there. Obviously, when you start moving across your video journey, a uh, company like ourselves, that's something that we kind of do a lot of. But if you were, for example, doing a video where it might be five tips or five frequently asked questions and you're putting that in one video, you would have that conversation. So you might be able to, like I said, speak off camera and just filming the person on camera or have it like an interview. But if you were doing it looking off camera, you would then just go through all that footage, find the best responses. And instead of having the audio from the conversation, you'd have a visual on screen. So you might have been saying, let's say, five frequently asked questions about the best way to use our main product. So if you're going through all of these, you'll get the best lines out of it. And then on screen, it'll go question number one duh, 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 comes up on screen as a graphic that can be animated. It can just be a still visual. And then the answer will come back and the edit will show somebody just speaking confidently about that question. You won't hear the other person who's asking it. And if there are any stutters or are there any bits that didn't make sense that we cut out and then the edit then goes back to a visual of question two so you can have someone who might not be confident in front of camera having a conversation talking about the things that they know about answering the questions but on the screen you just hear the main bits and then you see a branded mm. visual come up with all the key information on screen which i think mm. is really effective to have those visuals especially for mobile video as people are watching them and they might mm. be subtitling them as well just to give that extra bit of information yeah, I mean, I, th I think there's something there and I, I'm, I'm, I'm sort of thinking, well, I'd pay for that like, yeah. as a service, right? It's kind of like, well, one of the things that I do and, you know, can repurpose a lot of this and it's sort of done in that way. But it's like for, for people that don't have like a podcast or, or, or they don't do regular videos, this must be an hour, or, you know, an hour a month. You can probably get four, five, six different videos out of a, an hour's conversation. And yeah. I mean, you, you touched on there is like you can go off and do it and the edit and all the rest of it. Let's be honest. Most people that are listening to this, they shouldn't be thinking about how to go off and edit videos. They shouldn't be thinking yeah. about all of that stuff. They should be thinking, how do I get in front of a camera and give the best answers to a question that I know my ideal clients are having? 
-hmm. and then I'm going to give it over to someone else because that is not where the, the value for you learning all that stuff is. That's why there's guys like you out there, right? It's, it's why there are companies yeah. out there that, that will do that. And the, you know, the ROI that could be as a result of just doing that hour's work once a month, it's huge. Like it's, it's crazy because you can use it in follow-ups and social media and all that kind of stuff. And, you know, some of the worst, uh, one of the, some of the worst um, uh, marketing faux pas I find is just a, a failure to follow up. And, you know, yeah, people yeah. forget who you are because you don't follow up with them. Well, there is a system in a box in a way. It's like do that for an hour a month. Find someone like Marcus to edit it for you and then go stick it in your autoresponder. And, um, yeah, when you do that, contact us and tell you how you're gone because, uh, you know, it's, yeah. it's exactly the sort of thing I think that could really, really help someone. Um, I think that consistency is the key and that's something that we will always advise. And, you know, it is kind of pitching it in the right way because, if you go to an agency and they're pitching some videos to you, like we would be if someone came to us, you might think, oh, they're trying to get us to sign up to four, five, six videos there. Obviously, they want to sell as many videos as possible. But the key I always say to people is that don't picture just one shoot as one video. There's so much you can get out of it. And it's the same principles for any digital marketing content. It's the same with blogs. It's the same with, let's think of SEO. It's a long-term strategy mm -hmm. that you build on but you're not just doing one thing that's going to return one thing so for example like you were saying there once a month you can sit down you can have an hour-long chat with team members about something but that could break up into four videos that's released over the course of four weeks one a week every friday for instance and then you've got little other snippets that can be put on your other social mm -hmm. channels email them out put them on landing pages right away just for one hour okay, you might have an afternoon set aside to do it. You've got a whole month's worth of video content on a very mm. basic level that's mm. going to work for you. So yeah. I think that is, it's changing that mindset of seeing video just as a, a one-off video that's just going to sit on YouTube or going to sit somewhere on your website, but as a tool that can be repurposed and used over and over again to kind of consistently mm. reach out to your clients like that. So I think when you go at these things, it's the planning stage is so important because you've got to think about what you want to do with it and what you can get out of the time that you're putting into it as well. Mm. Yeah. And it's, it's, it's equally as important as well to make sure that the content is going to resonate with the, uh, with the ultimate end yeah. client that you want it to resonate with. And one of the ways you do that, and, and, you know, here's the secret, um, I'm going to reveal it. It's you ask them. <laughs> right? It's yeah, yeah. A, a lot of people don't like the simplicity of that answer, but it is like you can speak to your clients and, you know, you, a lot of people will speak to them regularly. Drop in the question, what, you know, what are you struggling with at the moment? You know, what's what's going on in your business that you want to answer? It doesn't even necessarily have to be exactly around what you do necessarily, because, you know, if you have something that's like you can have um, someone that says, yeah, well, I've been trying to figure out this bloody Zoom thing. Like, I, I just can't work it out and, and it's really bugging me and all the rest of it. Well, if you've been using Zoom for a while, there's no reason, even if you haven't, you don't sell anything to do with Zoom, you can make, you know, because you're helping your clients, you could mm -hmm. make a quick little, you know, video where someone asks you a question. So what are your you know, top five tips for, you know, using Zoom in the settings or something like that? And you can just reel it off. And that's a yep. different way of thinking about it because, you know, certain people in this industry, B2B services, their subject matter isn't always, how can I say it politely, the most exciting. So you've got to think of creative ways to add value with content that will be useful to your clients in a way that's going to keep them coming back. So there's there's something there. And, and the whole repurposing thing is it's so important. And uh, uh, I think we met, I mentioned to you um, Amy Woods, who was on the um, on the show a few yeah, episodes yeah. back, who's uh, from your neck of the wood. She's massively all about re purposing content and yeah check that episode out i can't remember the, the um episode number off the top of my head but make sure if you're listening and you haven't listened to that go back and listen to amy because these two episodes really do complement each other so um what i want to sort of um ask you about next is do you have like a almost like a um a, a toolkit or a um um like a, a top five or something like that of videos that you should have as a as a b2b business it could mm -hmm. be you know, let's, let's say that the five most important videos for any B2B or service company, what would they be? So what I was thinking then when you were talking about 
um, that people need to think about what their clients want. What is it if you ask them they want to know is if you want to think of this on a very basic level is if you are building your website, what is the information that you'd have on your website traditionally? Okay, you'd have an about us page, you'd have meet the team, you'd have frequently asked questions, you'd have your services. So right there, there's four things which you would want on your website and you'd want people to know about your business. But all of those can, in my opinion, much more effectively be translated through a video. Um, and especially with the kind of websites that are being designed to that, to, uh, at the moment, is that it looks more effective. So if a business comes to us straight away and goes, never done video, we want to use it more to get our brand out there. Just very basically, we want to use it to modernize. We want to get our message out there. What do you think we should do? The number one I'm saying is, let's get an about us video. Let's replace what you would have on your about us page, which traditionally would be a few paragraphs of text with a video. Because yeah, great. That um, page is going to work nicely for your SEO, but that doesn't mean you can't do that in other ways. But I think it's so much more effective to click on a, a website, see maybe a two minute video, and it's telling you about that. So you, in that, you can have the team members, you can have people talking, you can show off what the business does, and you can brand it with um, themed animations, getting your brand style across. So straight away, that's a great one. That can be put out in so many different ways. Like you said, that can be put in your email signature. It's on your website. It's used on YouTube. You can use it in your advertising. Fantastic. Um, like we said before, frequently asked questions. There's a mini series in itself. And that's something um, you could just put four together. You could put eight together and have them on the website. But it's something that you could have ongoing, whether it be a podcast, whether it be a video series or something like that, where you're just updating it frequently and having that on the website as well. Mm. Uh, yeah. Is it, isn't it the about page is like the, the second most visited page on a website, I think. Um, I don't know. I can't remember where I heard that, but we, we sort of think we don't necessarily think about the about us page being an important page, whereas actually on your website, if you look at your traffic or, or it, it's it's yeah, looking at sort of hundreds of thousands mm -hmm. of websites, they found that this is generally the uh, the second most visited. And I think the funny thing is that your about us page shouldn't actually be about you. <laughs> Yeah, it yeah. should be about the um yeah the 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 problem that you solve for your client mm -hmm. and about your client and then you know a little bit about how you do it which is yeah i think a lot of people could think oh right and about us video right this is me this is you know this is where i you know these are my awards these are my things da, da, da. nah that's not what you're talking about is it yeah exactly and an example that comes to mind was one that we did for a, a marketing agency in Manchester and they basically wanted to replace their about us on the website and, and this was just short and snappy 60 seconds didn't even have any interview um, audio in there it was just a combination of shots of their team uh, mainly using an animation and uh, motion graphics and then music on top of it. So they wanted to capture their style, which was a little bit funky, kind of modern agency, but getting their branding across in it, but showing exactly what their offering was and the type of clients that they work with. And it worked really well. Um, you get to see the team members in it, but you see this information that's coming through that's really clear of what they're offering and solutions that they offer and all of the graphics are animated in the style of... Um, their brand so that's something that they use on their email signatures it's on the website they send out um and it's perfect for them because you go in their website and you know what they're on about straight away and it fits in with everything mm. rather than these paragraphs of text which i think even historically with websites people didn't want to read loads of text even more so now people are getting more used to images and videos we kind of just put those about us pages on with a load of text forget about it even though like you said it's one of the most visited mm. pages on the website so i think starting off with that and if you look at your website and think what do we want our clients and customers to see how can we convert that into video i think that is a perfect way to start with your video marketing strategy because then that will lead you out into other directions and you know you're starting with your core message then so you're actually delivering information to your customers and clients that you know they want to hear so yeah that's what i'd say if you want to dive in straight away look at your website and look at what you want to turn into video basically yeah, it's a it's it's a great tip, and um, it's not something that's that I, I would have thought is is too difficult to do, and 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 especially if it's like okay, well, I want to get across what you know just just about the business and, and all the rest of it, and if you don't want to do it with a specific team member or you don't have a figurehead for the business, for example, as you say, like motion graphics, photos, text overlays, all that kind of thing, 
and the beauty of doing it that way is that you can create an emotion that you want the yeah. person watching to feel because you know sensory wise video isn't just about the visuals it's about you know all the other things that go into it it's it's the audible um, side of things like using the right music can be absolutely key i mean can you imagine um you know jaws without the da, 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 da. it's it's a totally <laughs> yeah, it would nothing, wouldn't it? yeah you, you wouldn't have got that thing and now so it's kind of like you've got to think about it in almost a 3d thing it's it's mm-hmm. not just the visuals it's not just the words on the screen it's not just the 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 the, the words that are being spoken necessarily it kind of goes with everything and the graphics and, and all the rest of it so that's why i think that yeah if you want to go into this and, and create something that actually sort of ticks all of those boxes. Maybe that's not something that you could be doing on your own. You'd need the help from somebody like you because this is where you spent your time actually, you know, sharpening your sword and, and, and getting really, really good at. So if, if anyone sort of listening to this is hearing it and thinking, well, yeah, that's a great idea, just an about video. Well, I would suggest, yeah, giving a, you know, a, giving Marcus a, a call or, or getting in touch with him because that is a fantastic way to start. And once you've got that nailed in, then you can sort of see what happens as a result. And then you can think about building on it because it's all small steps, right? And sometimes we think, right, we've got to eat the whole elephant and create all of this video content or the rest of it. We'll start with one. And that's a great way of starting with video and just seeing how it works. So there you go. I think yeah. that's that's a great idea. Absolutely. And just going back on what you said there is all about no matter how much content you're producing to what level, it's all about starting off with your key message. And these are why filmmaking principles at the highest level go so well with uh, marketing principles because so we'll work on other projects where we're looking, where we're um, producing higher end films that might not be to do with adverts or anything to do with that. But the principles of making a film like that is you want to connect with your audience. So you are putting something on screen that your audience is going to connect with, which is exactly the same as what you want to do when you're marketing. You want your client and customer to connect with your brand message, with what you believe in, what you are trying to put out there in the world. Mm. So now then just putting that into video, those two principles align with each other so well. So as long as you're going, okay, what do I want the audience to feel? you start making video off the back of that it doesn't matter the level of production those principles are the same and that's when you can start getting your results and seeing uh, the main benefits of video marketing and and there's that says i know we've referenced a few movies in here and, and, and a reference to the the movie industry but that is a multi multi billion pound dollar industry for a reason because we've been responding and communicating through stories since we were uh, you know painting on the caves right and they have worked out a story arc that all blockbuster films make. And I, I can't remember who wrote it. It's, it's the hero's journey. Can't remember. Maybe you do. Um, but every, every movie that becomes a success, it follows that story arc, that sort of, yeah. uh, you know, Luke Skywalker, um, sort of story arc, the Harry Potter, the, um, uh, oh, again, movies have just gone out of my head, but the, the, the character goes through, a visual transformation in front of someone there's a struggle they meet a mentor they help them get help then they do something and it all goes wrong and they think they're at the bottom and then all of a sudden they get inspiration and motivation and end up saving the day right yeah. it's it's that arc and that story and you can still use that and there's some great um uh resources out there um story brand by donald miller is a great book um for example that sort of takes that hero's journey and then puts it into the context around um business that's a great book to go out and uh, and have a look at if you're looking at how do i create this sort of story arc and create that emotion and get that connection with the person watching and and yeah that's just one that comes to mind so uh yeah there's there's so many ways you can use video and 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 yeah it's uh yeah there's so many options so um i mean what's what's been working i mean obviously we're uh, we're coming out of this um situation but so from a from a business uh, sort of side of things and you know what's what's been working or has worked in terms of generating clients for your business i'll always and will continue to bang on about linkedin right? i think for me linkedin is if you're in a business you're trying to do anything in the business world like if you're not using LinkedIn to its full effect. And I think you're really missing out on a lot. And even more so now they have included a native video on there. They're really trying to push that as well and kind of catch up to where the other platforms are. So I think video aside, LinkedIn's fantastic because 
it's so targeted in the people that you want to find um you can share information really quickly like you can on the other social media networks and i think just a way to build relationships um it's the platform to get on i mean so many of the uh, relationships we've built and client uh, relationships that we've formed have been through linkedin um and to bring video into that something that has been working quite nicely for us now is um, uh, anyone who's on linkedin or know the amount of kind of uh, requests you get and then people popping up to you asking about stuff and some of those are leads to good to relationships but a lot of them you might think that's a bit spammy i don't need that in my life um but something that i've been using is um sending video messages as an introduction on linkedin mm. so this is again using that principle of talking to camera humanizing it a bit but I think it stands out a little bit more. At the minute, you can only do it via mobile. So you have to find a little bit of a route round there if you've mm. edited a video on your computer. But um, in terms of uh, utilizing video and forming connections on LinkedIn, that's another way of um, getting that connection going and standing out a little. But I think for me, um, that is the kind of ultimate social platform I've been using at the minute because it all comes down to, again, people, you know what people's values are because you can see exactly what they've been sharing, what they've been talking about and the type of spaces that they operate in. So I'd fully encourage anyone who's not using mm. LinkedIn to its full potential to really take a look at it and, you know, start getting some information out there and making some connections. Yeah. Well, um, yeah, I certainly didn't set that up in, uh, you know, in any way, shape or form, but, um, <laughs> When uh, I hope, yeah, when this this uh, episode airs, you know, maybe you all have heard the uh, the intro will have uh, changed because um, one of the things I've been doing during sort of lockdown is I've accidentally written a book. Right? Sounds ridiculous. Like you do. <laughs> it started off as a bit of a blog post, which went down into a guide, and then it's ended up sort of basically a book with spin-offs of templates and. All, all the rest of it, which is basically focused around what I call conversational relationship marketing, sort of mm -hmm. using LinkedIn as the primary channel of doing that. So, yeah, if uh, I'm hoping that it's going to be ready by this time, I'm sure it is. It's it's almost done. But, um, uh, yeah, you'll be able to get a copy and, and, and sort of um, see what that is. But it's 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 so true that LinkedIn for B2B, you know, it's it's a tool. It's a platform. It's a channel. And it's, it's the way that you use it, which is all about building relationships, being conversational, adding value and sort of, you know, doing all the things that you've said. So, yeah, um, I, the, uh, the the video thing, I must admit, I, I didn't realize that you could do the video now on the app. I know that it was coming. I don't know if it's with everyone. I know you could do the voice drops and um the, the hack that I use um, to use video, because I do the same, is I use BombBomb, Bomb, which um, is a video messaging um, okay. software. Um, you can also use Loom. So you would do it on that and just copy and paste the link into the message and they can go and watch it that way. It does take them off of LinkedIn, but same sort of thing. And you don't have the restriction of just under a minute. So there's another way you can use the video. And um, yeah, check out the episode with Ethan Buke. Um, rehumanizing your business who is the chief evangelist of uh of bonbon bon because he yeah that company they they use video in a very personal way through messaging and through emails and all that kind of thing so it's yeah, again yeah. it's another compliment to uh, what you've been saying so um yeah marcus this has been um a great conversation and um fascinating um there's so many ways of thinking about video and it even sparked off ways, um, you know, when my ADHD tangent went off in, uh, you know, all sorts of directions. But there is so much opportunity to use video and use it well that, you know, the world's your oyster, essentially. So um, where should people go to find out more about you? And um, yeah, what kind of uh, what pe what kind of people should be doing that right now? Yeah, so our website is where the hub of all the information is there. And then we also share a lot on our social media platforms, which are all linked on there. So that's at glassamedia.com. Um, I know it's pronounced it a bit awkwardly. So that's spelled G-L-A-C-E and then media.com for anyone who thinks I'm being a bit pernickety there. Um, so yeah, on there. And then we have links to all our social platforms from there. I'd say people who should get in touch are um, anyone who obviously firstly thinks that they want to dive into the world of video just for the sole reason of um modernization of your marketing a lot of people see the way the trends are going video is out there social media has been used so much for marketing and video is often the main uh content that's effective on there so even if you just want to dive into that but i'd say get in touch just with an idea and 
the vision of where you want your marketing strategy to go because what we love to do with clients we're not there just to kind of fulfill the end goal of here's the finished idea we'll make the video for you we're always keen to work with people to say okay all we want to know is what you want to achieve for your marketing yeah we're not a um, an agency in the terms of that we're going to manage different uh, platforms and stuff like that but we know what videos work we've seen them work in different platforms we've seen them work in different avenues so we were there to work with people with developing ideas giving unique and creative ex um, perspectives on them but then building them in a way that's going to be optimized for social media optimized for your website and all the different kind of channels that you use so there's two keys to when you are doing that it's not just about the message you put in there which i'd say is the most important but it's then the kind of end product you put out there and knowing what type of edit is going to be working well on there so like i said get in touch even if it's just a basic idea or it's a vision of where you want to go with your marketing there's always something that can be done with video Definitely. And uh, yeah, I suggest that, um, yeah, even even just to sort of, uh, yeah, have a have a conversation and explore because, um, yeah, as a, as maybe you've seen throughout this conversation, you never know where a conversation will go and what, exactly. what ideas will spark and, um, you know, what you could get as a result. So um, highly, highly recommend, um, you know, chatting to Marcus and his team. So um, thanks ever so much, Marcus. It's been um, it's been a pleasure and um, also appreciate the uh uh, the, the patients with a bit of a dodgy start with the, <laughs> with the, oh, um, right. well, with the baby got, monitor. Special and... measures now, we? <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. So um, all that's left to say is happy fishing. Thank you very much. So there we go. That's it for today's episode. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you got some great ideas and, and found it really valuable and you've got some things that you can now go off and do in your own business to help grow your business and attract and catch more clients. And if you have found it valuable and you can think of just one other person that may find some of these ideas helpful and, and, and help them grow their business, please share it with them because they'll thank you for it. So also don't forget to grab a copy of my book, Conversational Relationship Marketing from the podcast gift page at thinklikeafish.co.uk forward slash podcast gift. And all that's really left with me to say is thank you ever so much for listening today. I know there's a lot of podcasts out there you could be listening to. You've chosen this one. And for that, I am truly, truly grateful. If you're a first time listener or a, or a long time listener and you haven't yet subscribed to the show, please make sure that you do because you'll get updated of the latest episodes every time they come out. And if, again, you are enjoying it, I'd really, really appreciate a honest rating review on Apple Podcasts. I read every single one personally and they do really mean the world to me. And yes, they help others find the show. If you're able to do that, again, I massively, massively appreciate it. But until next time, happy fishing.